can use great. Y equals, oh. Every problem I'm going to do exactly the same way. So the first thing I want to find is my amplitude. This should be done on your notes. And amplitude stands for height. If you do this, these problems, and when you're doing your homework and classwork, if you put this in parentheses, it will instill in your mind that amplitude means the height. That equals the absolute value of A. What is A here, people? Two. 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 Very good. So therefore, my amplitude is just two. Whenever you say the word amplitude, you will never say negative anything because the amplitude is always the absolute value. Absolute value. I'm glad you did not say positive like the little middle schoolers. Okay, my period, which is how long before repeating, and that's equal to 2 pi over the absolute value of B. And what is B here? What is B here? What is B here? One. Yes. What is B here? One. Whole class. What is B? One. Okay. We did. Don't start saying that X thing. X is X. We are. Oh. If there's nothing there, what's always in front of X? Thank you. Okay. Yes. I might go right there. Okay. That sounds good. All right, everybody good? Any questions? Okay, now, first thing I do, I deal with my amplitude because that's what I, I, I calculated first, right? Okay, my amplitude, because it's dealing with height, what axis deals with height? The y axis, very good. So I'm going to do my y axis first. And it says... Okay, so however high I go, I'm going to go that what? Low. Low. All right? Everybody good so far? Yes, so, if my amplitude deals with my y-axis, that means my period deals with what? X-axis. X-axis. And what is my period? 2 pi. And what does that mean? That means at 2 pi, what's going to happen with my graph? It's going to start repeating. It's going to start repeating. That's why I'm only teaching you one period. Because once you get that one period, all you got to do is what? Repeat. Okay? Or as you people would do in this day and time, copy, paste. Or copy, paste. Okay? Back in the day when we had to sharpen our pencil with knives, we had to repeat it. Okay? All right. Now, I know. So, <laughs> going back to this, this is 2 pi, right? Now, if I, I need to break this, no, let's go to this first. The sine curve, you're going to need to memorize the curve itself. Now, first thing I need you always to remember, sine will always start at 0, 0. Sine will always start at 0, 0. Sign will always start at what? Zero zero. Zero 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 zero, zero, zero is where? With sign. With will always start. And sign starts where? Zero zero. And what is zero zero? With sign will start. Thank you. All right. Now check this out and look at your discovery curve. These three points right here are called what? They're called what? Raise your hand. Don't yell out. They're called what? No, just three. these three points. Zeros. What's another word for that? Solutions. What's another word for that? Answers. Answers. Something you learned in middle school? Root. Yes, root. I forgot that one earlier today. Root. X-intercepts. Yes. He just said oh, I'm sorry. He said like Gary got it. Everybody acknowledge that Mr. Barnhart said X in a second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, listen. Listen. In one period, sign will have three X intercepts. In one period, 
sine will have three solutions. In one period, sine will have three roots. In one period, sine will have three answers. Am I changing what I'm saying? I'm just saying the same thing in a different way. All right? So, and if you don't believe me, look at your discovery and, and you will see that sine, your sine curve only touched the x-axis three times. Okay? Yes. Amazing, isn't it? Hey, let's get it and let's back up here. Okay. Now, what's the first thing you always know about sine? It has three solutions. It will always start at zero, zero. What's the second thing? You always have to say this. In one period, it will all it will have three intercepts. Or it will have three intercepts in one period. Or in one period, it will have three intercepts. X intercepts to be specific. Okay? Straight? Yeah. All right. Now, at this point here, this point was at the what? One. One. This point was at your what? Amplitude. And your amplitude is what? No, the definition. That's a key word. What's the definition? Your absolute Why don't you try reading your definition, baby? That you wrote down earlier. What is the amplitude? How high the x-axis is radical. Okay. Now it will go one time. One time it will be at the amplitude up, and one time in one period it will be that same distance below. So first thing, sine will always start at zero. Second thing, sine will have three x-intercepts in one period. Third thing, sine will go up to the amplitude one time in one period, and sine will go that same distance of the amplitude down in one period. Notice, I said in one period three or four times, right? Mm -hmm. When is the only time that I not say in one period? When I said it starts at zero. Everything else I said was in what? One and guess how I want it on a test? One in one period, Mr. Talib, I have three x-intercepts for sine. In one period, Mr. Talib, I have one point at above the amplitude above the x-axis. And in one period, Mr. Talib, I have one point below the same distance as the amplitude. And if you say you forgot something, that's why I forgot to put that grade in the book. Okay, y'all straight? Now these are things, now remember what the sine curve looks like because cosine looks similar but it's slightly different. Slightly different. Okay? Everybody good? Now, I have to break this up. I have to break this x-axis up. When you're breaking things up, what's the easiest way to start breaking something up? In half. In half. That's what I'm talking about. So. What is my period? 2 pi. 2 pi. What's half of that? 1 pi. 1 pi. One pi. Very good. We're not done. Now, what three points can I put on here right now? They are called what? Huh? What three points can I put right now? My what? Where it starts is 1. Zero, zero, and what's my other two points? They are called, what are they called? Solutions. Solutions, what else are they called? X-intercepts. X-intercepts, what else are they called? Roots. 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 Answers, yes. And my other one is at pi, and my other one is at two pi. So I have just graphed all three of my, all three of my X-intercepts or solutions in one period. What have I done? And in one period I have graphed and three x-intercepts in one period. And in one period? Ah, uh, sucky sucky now. Now, I gotta keep breaking this up. And you said the easiest way to break something up was to do what? So that's uh, half of pi. Pi over two. Pi over two. Yes, half a pi, but I would like a value. Thank you. Pi over two, right? 
Okay, now, at this point, at power two, what do I have there? What's going to happen? Look at the curve. You're going to find your height. I'm going up my amplitude, which here is what? Two. 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 So that's my third point. Now check this out for people who hate fractions. Everybody look at this. When you want to know what this one is, and for one, and I know you guys always look for when I'm going to say always, it will always be like this. Once you get your smallest fraction, watch this. One pi over two. This is technically two pi over two. And so this has to be three pi over two. Don't fret up. Listen, and this technically is what? Four pi over two. You got to be able to see this and know that. What's up? Okay, now at 3 pi over 2, what am I going to have? How no. It's going to go what? Down. Down, Down what? The same amount as the height. I'm going to use my amplitude. Thank you. Let's use big words. All right, now this is called a sine curve. Check it out. This is called a sine curve. What is it called? A sine It's called a sine what? Curve. Therefore, it should not look like this. So, what did you get? Uh, Hello. So, why did they have to? So, why did they have to go down instead of going up? Sine curve always looks like this. And you why? Because you plotted your points in your discovery, and you saw why when you plot your points. That's what you get. Okay. Why is a linear equation a straight line? Because when I plot my points, that's what I get. Why is a quadratic formula a parabola? Because when I plot my points, what do I get? A parabola. Okay? All right, whoa, what are we supposed to be doing? Absorbing. So, look at it. And what do you have to memorize for your exit ticket? That's right here. Just memorize this, you're gonna work on that. All right, so that's example number one. Anybody got a question? Going once, going twice.